disappear. I've seen that road before. Oh, yeah. Don't leave me standing here. Lead me to your door. The wild and windy night that the rain washed away. Listen, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. Welcome, welcome to this crazy house with me, your host, Khadija. You know, Young Thug is not the only one that's on trial, and this is something that I've been keeping an eye on because this really bothered me when it happened, and I'm sure a lot of these young people don't know who run DMC is. But I can tell you that um, a lot of y'all know Reverend Run, and that's his daughter, Angela, that's caught up in this mess with Yo Gotti. But this is about Jam Master J. You know, and they, the, the guys that killed him, Carl Jordan and Ronald Washington, are on trial. Okay. They pleaded not guilty to killing Jam Master J. Jordan and Washington allegedly thought that they were in a drug deal worth 200000 but they allegedly became in range when Jason cut them out. Okay, so they saying this is about uh, greed, revenge, and a drug deal going bad. As the two men, 59 and 40, are on trial for murder, right? Two men accused of killing Run DMC's Jam Master J were driven by greed and revenge over a failed drug deal over 20 years ago. In opening statements in Brooklyn Federal Court, Assistant U.S. Attorney Miranda Gonzalez laid out the prosecution's case that Carl Jordan, 40, And Ronald Washington, 59, killed his brother out of revenge and greed. They are accused of murdering a 37-year-old music icon inside a Queens recording studio in 2002. After they were said to have been cut out of a lucrative cocaine deal. Dead man can't tell... He can't defend himself. Both men have pleaded not guilty in what some, I mean, in in which which was one of the most infamous unsolved slayings in hip hop. Add this to the list. The case remained cold for almost two decades until Jordan and Washington were arrested in 2020 with a 10 count indictment. against these damn suspects. Gonzalez told jurors that they would hear from eyewitnesses who were in the studio that night and that the pair confessed to their involvement to others. Each defendant was proud that they had taken down Jam Master J and got away with it. Washington's lawyer, Ezra uh, Spilkey, however, argued that the case was held together with tape and glue and declared that the prosecutors have no clue who killed Jam Master J, who was born uh, Jason Mizell. This case is about 10 seconds, 21 years ago. It's a blink of an eye situation. Hmm. Wow, how time flies, huh? Um, The men face a maximum sentence of life in prison and a mandatory minimum at least 20 years in prison if convicted. The government has said it would not seek the death penalty. 
Mm. Wow. Hmm. Um. Wow. Wow, 20 years ago, huh? It's amazing. Mizell worked the turntables along with rappers Joe Ron Simmons and Daryl DC, DMC McDaniels as the group helped bring hip-hop into the mainstream in the 80s with hits like It's Tricky and a remake of Aerosmith's Walk This Way, Talk This Way, Walk, and Raising Hell. I mean, I'm going to stop because I know um, <laughs> I don't want to get off task. Anyway, some of the songs advocate against illegal narcotics. And the group even recorded a Just Say No anti-drug public service announcement in the 1980s for the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration. But Gonzalez said that as the spotlight faded, Men Mizell turned to the drug trade, serving as a middleman to sellers and buyers across the country. A few simple calls, she said, could earn him hundreds of thousands of dollars. Late in the 90s and in the early 2000s, Run DMC had done very little recording together, so neither Simmons nor McDaniels were present for the first day of the trial. Um... I mean, and neither one of them were present. Mizell was 37 and a father of three when he was shot after allegedly acquiring 10 kilograms of cocaine from a Midwest distributor, which Washington Jordan um, and others planned to distribute in the Bar Baltimore area. And I say we're in the Midwest. What is it? Kansas City, Milwaukee, Chicago, one, what, where, what? Um, wow, this is sad. They got the studio. This this article is taken from the Daily Mail, by the way. And um, there are pictures of the recording studio and everything that was taped off at that point. The dealer involved in the sale refused to work with Washington, cutting both defendants out of a potential $200,000 uh, payday, she alleged. Jordan, who was 18 at the time, and Washington, who was then 38, thought they would be part of a lucrative Baltimore deal and became enraged when Mizell told them that they were being cut out, leaving them with nothing. Gonzalez said that in the days leading up to his death, Mizell acted troubled and carried a gun. On the night of October 30th, 2002, however, he barely had time to react when the two men and an accomplice, Jay Bryant, showed up at his studio in Jamaica, Queens. He used to always say if it wasn't for them, uh, nobody would... They Hollis Crew area. I mean, nobody would even remember. Nobody would even do nothing from. He was proud of being from Jamaica, Queens. Bryant was charged last year after he was seen going into a building the night of the killing, and his DNA is was recovered at the scene. He will be tried separately in twenty twenty six. In the prosecutor's account. Of the murder, Mizell was in his recording studio studio in Hollis, the Queens neighborhood of eastern New York City, where he and the two defendants grew up. The two, I mean, the studio was a neighborhood hangout. Mizell's manager, Lydia High, was there along with Mizell's friend Tony Rincon and at least three other people were working on music in the enclosed recording suite. Bryant and a friend of Jordan who Mizell did not know entered from the front door 
and let Washington and Jordan in through a locked backfire exit. Both men were armed with handguns. So see, um, like I said, that game is it's just rest in peace, Jam Master J. Prosecutors say that Washington waved a gun and ordered one person to lie on the floor just as Mizell stood up from a couch to greet his godson. Another shot hit and wounded another man in the studio at the time, Mizell's friend, Uriel Tony Rincon, before the killers fled. Jordan shot him in the head with a 40 caliber bullet from a few inches away, killing him instantly in a brazen murder, Gonzalez told the jury. All three defendants fled moments later. It was just a damn ambush, an execution, she said. And you will learn that it was motivated by greed and revenge. It, he was murdered in his own studio by people he knew. Still, police struggled to close the case behind witnesses initially weren't forthcoming. The people in the room at the time didn't identify the killers for months, even years later. Now, you see that? How that go? That's how it go. Huh. I mean, and as a people, I mean, hustling is one thing. And you already know what you're getting into when you get into this game. But when you see so many of us losing our lives for greed, for drugs, for a contract, for the bag, it becomes really depressing. I mean, they been know who killed him, and everybody in that room knew who killed him. I was just waiting for them to be brought to justice. Spilkey, Washington's lawyer, questioned why his client would want to kill Menzel since Washington was an alcoholic, relied on the rap star financially, and was living on Menzel's sister's couch at the time. Why bite the hand of the man that feeds you, Sp Spilkey said. Why kill the person you depend on? He said there was no forensic evidence tying Washington to the murders, only aging. Ain't that something? <laughs> he said there's nothing tying him to the murder. He got to defend him some kind of way, don't he? How many of y'all remember this? I mean, I'm talking 20 years ago. But, I mean, God. That hurt me so bad. I was like, here we go a damn again. Another young black man. Six, well, you know, and once you stop selling records, it gets very difficult. You got to find another hustle. You can't. It, it's just that simple. Um, and a lot of us didn't do that. And the next easiest thing was to sell drugs because we like our money big we don't like our money small and um Mizell was just a beloved artist but convicting the wrong person does not solve the tragedy the spilk he said it just adds to another one in a playboy article push published a year after the killing washington was quoted as saying he was on the way to the studio the night of the killing when he heard gunshots and saw Jordan fleeting. Washington's lawyer questioned Monday why none of these people that was with Menzel at the time of his death bothered to even call the police. Instead, Randy Allen, a friend and business partner who was among those in the studio, went directly to a nearby police precinct to report the shooting. They just left his ass there. 
I mean, this is the kind of shit that, ugh, it really disturbs me, you know, because unlike the Italians, we're not going to sit there and, and, and um, claim the underground is the only place we can live and then think we're going to buy our way out of it like they did <laughs> or like the Irish did. I mean, we're not going to, so it's just going to be pent on us as the most violent group of people. The only sad thing is we only kill ourselves. And uh, at the time they said Jordan was, that Jordan was 18. All I can say is this is very sad, but how many of y'all remember that and what y'all think about this trial getting underway and maybe possibly justice finally coming? The trial is expected to last about four weeks. And um, wow, 205th Street, Hollis Avenue. They, they they named Run DMC and Jam Master J Way. Yeah. Rest in peace, brother. Rest in peace. What what's y'all comment? What y'all what y'all think about this? If you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, and share the channel. And we'll see you in the next video.